everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. I have a confession to make. I have never made a geode, either with acrylic pouring or resin, mainly because I never knew what I wanted to do, and maybe sort of, kind of also, because I'm a little chicken. <laughs> it's possible. But have you ever bought an art or craft supply just because it was pretty even though you didn't need it, and worse yet, you had enough of that type of thing at home already to last you until the end of time. <laughs> well, when I was at Michael's looking for, you know, I don't even remember what I was there for. <laughs> because I was stopped in my tracks by a little jar of glitter. It was just so pretty. But a few inches later, I saw this. A jar of glass glitter, chunky glass glitter. And I knew I wanted to make a geode. And yeah, um, I, I also bought the other bottle of glitter too, cause it was just so pretty. Look at that. <laughs> I had a coupon, it was cheap. Okay, but I digress. Let's talk geode and the plan. Since it's my first one, I'm going to work on a simple round piece of MDF that I've already got primed with a couple of layers of gesso. I wanna do something with this vintage gold color and these aqua mylar flakes that I've had forever. Maybe some pearl as a base color. This is pearl mica powder. Maybe a touch of a bluer blue than this. And bright spots of gold as highlights now and then. I'm leaning more toward fantasy than realistic. My first step after picking out what I wanted to use was sort of designing my geode. The layout and the colors and the overall shape. To help myself, I made a quick sketch of what I think I want it to sort of kind of look like, but I'll likely deviate from this as I go. Since I anticipate a couple of layers of resin, this will be a two-part video. And I will try my darndest to have part two up within two days. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to know exactly when that conclusion is ready for you and to get in on more fun projects. I haven't even started and I already made a change. I decided that in the center, I'm gonna add some crushed Swarovski crystal because I'm a jeweler and I have a ton of these. So I'm putting this in too. To help myself, I'm just going to draw in some light guidelines. Now that I have a couple of lines down, I'm going to paint in base colors just to help me remember where everything goes <laughs> so that I don't like start pouring the wrong thing in the wrong place. And this will also help with preventing like a white base showing through in areas that you didn't intend to be white. And what's fun about geodes is there's no real definite shape. You can just do whatever you want because there are no perfectly formed geodes. Every single one is different and all the lines are crooked and crazy and for the most part, you get to do whatever you want. <laughs> After putting down a couple of flakes of the aqua mylar, I realized that because it has an iridescent finish, it's going to flash purple sometimes, or like a lavender. So my other color was going to be more of a regular blue, like sky blue, but I've decided to change my mind. <laughs> By the end of this, this might be a butterfly if I change my mind anymore. But um, I'm gonna go with a lavender as another color, a color that I've never used before and it's called Duo Violet Brass. So it's kind of like an interference color. Sometimes it will look lavender and sometimes it has kind of a gold tone, which makes it perfect for this. So I'm gonna go with this. I'll crush 
wash up a couple of lavender crystals too. So I'm just gonna give myself a little lavender here. Here, I'll have two mica colors that kind of meet and hopefully do something fun. And then finally, a darker aqua would be kind of cool for some contrast. Now what I've done is I've mixed up some texture paint for myself. I had an old, old clear that, oh my gosh, I've had for the longest time. And I just added some color to it and I am just putting down a bead. This is just to help me sort of contain things. At least I'm hoping that'll be the case. I'm not making this huge wall to protect the resin, but when I go to spread things, I'll hit up against this periodically and I'll know to stop. The resin may flow over because this is not gonna be that high, but it'll still give me some lines to work with. And now I'm using Lumiere 3D which is just a metallic paint that's been made dimensional so that when you lay down a bead, it dries without sort of flattening out. So I know that I'm gonna want gold on either side of the pearl, so I might as well make myself that gold border. Now, you definitely don't need to do this, and I honestly don't even know if this is gonna help. It's one of those things that in my head it's a good idea, so I'm doing it and we'll see. I'm hoping it makes my life easier. It may not help at all. Now I'll let this dimensional paint dry for maybe two days, just to make sure that this really dries well before I decide to slap resin on top of it. And the reason you want to do something like that, like you never want to pour resin on a newly painted acrylic pour, for example, because you want your paint to really, really dry, even cure, so that if there's any humidity left in the paint, that it doesn't leach out into your resin and maybe cloud it. This stuff I'm thinking should dry definitely faster than an acrylic pour, so I'm thinking a couple of days should do me. Our dimensional paint is all dry and hard now. Again, it's more here as a guide, not necessarily as a design element. I imagine it might even get covered up by all the things that I'm gonna add, and that's really okay. I painted the edge of my board in metallic to go with this glitter. Since this color doesn't really exist in metallic paints that I know, what I did was I mixed two paints. I mixed Glorious Gold by DecoArt and the Extreme Sheen Silver. I could have used regular silver, it's just that this is the silver I happen to have. And by mixing these two, I got this nice antique gold, which goes nicely with this glitter. Since I don't want the resin running over the edge, at least not for this layer, I'm building a bit of a dam with blue painter's tape. When you do this, make sure that you've made really good contact with your board or canvas or whatever it is that you're working on so that resin doesn't seep into little cracks between the tape and the edge. For this first layer, I'm going to use a resin you've not seen me use before. This is Liquid Diamonds. It's made by the same people who make ClearCast 7050, my favorite resin, the one that I use the most. So why am I using this then? Well, a couple of reasons. One of the things I promised to do with this channel was introduce you to things with which you may not be familiar. I think that as artists, we are all the more creative 
when we know what's out there and what various materials can do. We're also more likely to get the results we're after when we work with materials that do what we need. Now, if you start working a lot with resin, you'll come to see that some resins are better for certain applications than others. Every resin has its own unique properties. And as a result, having a few on hand can give you more options when you're creating. The area of this board is just about 85 square inches. You remember that formula back in school, pi r squared? Yeah, that's how you figure out the area <laughs> of something that's circular. <laughs> anyway, that tells me that I need about 85 milliliters of resin. Since some of that is going to be supplemented by glitter and crystals and stuff, I'm only going to mix up 75 milliliters. 50 milliliters of resin and 25 milliliters of hardener because liquid diamonds is a two to one ratio resin. Now to tell you a little bit about this resin, part A, the resin has no smell. I mean, no smell, zero. Now part B, the hardener, smells kind of like sort of ammonia-y detergent, very, very faint. And then when you mix the two, I don't smell anything, ever. Now my reasons for choosing liquid diamonds for my first layer are it's very low viscosity, meaning it's super thin, almost like water in its consistency. As a result, when I mix it with the mica powder and especially the mylar flakes, it'll form few bubbles and those will escape easily on their own. And more importantly, this resin is going to give me a really long working time, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need. <laughs> it's gonna give me well over an hour since I'll be working with a few colors and textures all at once. I want all the time I can get. <laughs> I've marked off my cup, 25 milliliters for the hardener, plus another 50 for the resin, so a total of 75 milliliters. Pouring in the hardener, which really pours out like water. Usually, what's the thickest is the resin. Now, usually, when I have to pour in resin, I have to be super slow and careful because it's oozing out and clumps and not this. I tend to mix my resin for three minutes, sometimes a little longer. After four minutes of mixing, three to four minutes, this is what it looks like. I mean, there are definitely bubbles because that's pretty normal when you mix resin, but so few compared to most. And then let me see if I can get you to see how totally liquid this is. It's just a teeny bit thicker than water. It's awesome. <laughs> now what I need to do is mix myself up some batches. I honestly don't know how much of anything I need, so I'm just gonna mix up a small amount for now and see where that takes us. Now a tip when mixing mica into resin it's much easier if you put just a small amount of resin into your mica first, just a really small amount, and then mix that up. It will be much easier to break all your clumps in a small amount than if you had your full volume of resin to try to work. Now I'll add more resin. And then I am confident that now the resin that I add will mix in very easily. I don't need a lot of this. I've never used this color before. Oh my gosh, it's kind of bizarre. Like when I look down into the cup, it looks gold. And then I tilt it and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, it's purple. <laughs> Neat. For my darker teal, I'm gonna use duo blue-green. Let's see how that works. 
That is really awesome. Oh, oh my gosh, this is going to be fun. Okay. And for my last colors, I mixed up both Micro Pearl and Macro Pearl from Pearl X for my off-white color. And a couple of darker golds to coordinate with the glass glitter. So let's see what happens now. For this area, I'm just pouring some clear down. I'm gonna spread that to sort of grab on to the crystals when I pour them. Oh my gosh, how nervous am I? And the reason I'm putting this one down first is so that, as you see, glitter is falling into areas that I don't necessarily want, but since there is nothing there, it'll be easy to sweep it away. Now, I'm sure there are lots of different ways of doing this, and other people may do this totally differently, but this is my first time. And now for some of my crushed crystal and then I'm ending with the clear and now that I know I have stuff everywhere I'm just gonna tilt and let some of the excess fall off All right, I think now. I really want to see the mylar down. Now, if I had worked with another resin, it would have set up by now. This has a long work time, and even when it does start to set up, because it's so thin to begin with, it's hardly noticeable. It's still easy to work with. So this is like spreading, I don't know, honey. Yeah, it's like spreading honey. I'm just like spreading endless sparkle. It's 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 like a, a glitter lover's fantasy. <laughs> I mean, really. Now it's not it's not vital that I get up to the line here so much, but it is important that I get up to the tape because I don't want that when I pull off the tape, there's like a sort of a spot that didn't have any sparkle. So I want to make sure that I get it up all the way to the edge. I am happy so far. Alrighty, let's see. What can we sparkle next? I think I'm going to kind of take in the pearl. Push it up against Yeah, go on, let it make contact, so to speak. Now, for the pearl that I'm putting in these other areas, I'm not as concerned about filling it in beautifully, because I think I'm going to be mixing another color into the pearl and kind of doing like a swirly kind of thing. So I just want to put some pearl down here so that I have some to work with, but I don't need to evenly distributed and all that, like I, I want to do in this area. How about we go with this dark teal. Ooh, this is so rich. Oh my word. So like I thought, I'm pretty much covering up the dimensional paint and that's fine it's done its job of giving me a border to work toward and this is pretty filled in I think it's pretty good let's do these other areas here Let's put in some purple. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this color. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Oh, I'm in love with this. I must do many, many things with this color. Oh my gosh. 
it's just just divine it really does do a gold and purple thing it's so perfect for this this is the color i mixed up to sort of complement this now i mixed up a brighter gold and that i'm going to work into the pearl a little bit this is just a little brighter if i do detailing with posca pens i also wanted a gold that would sort of match the posca pens so this is sort of a mix of a couple of the golds again you know it doesn't look like much now but i have a plan <laughs> at least i hope i do we're hoping it's gonna work okay so my plan for this is to kind of pull this in a little bit like that it's my thought on this i'm pulling some of the gold over the dimensional line i have now i don't know if any of you know the answer to this but there is something about mica that's really interesting and i have never known what this is called so I'm, I'm sure there's a name for this. But like if you draw a line through mica, it kind of shows that line. I've always just called it like the directionality of mica, but I'm sure there's a real term for it and I don't know what it is. So if any of you know, let me know because I would love to know that. So like all the little strokes that I do in the mica, you can see them which I like. Now I'm kind of trying to decide what I want to do in terms of these areas here. I really like this. It's working for me very much. Let's just do a little itty bitty test. A little itty bitty corner <laughs> that I can undo if I need to. That's kind of cool. That way I get more of this purple that I'm loving so much. I can take it into the blue too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe here. Let the blue go into the white. Sure, why not? Something I had not anticipated was the blue sort of seeping into the this glitter. So I'm going to have to do something about that. And I've decided that I kind of want to drag some blue out this way. Just a little, not a ton. I like this line being fuzzy. And now I'm adding a very thin line of glitter here. I'm hoping the resin has set up enough now for this not to sink, but I suppose it could still happen. Now, in a real geo, this druzy like quality would just be here, but it's a fantasy, so I can do anything I want, right? <laughs> right? Just say yes. Just say yes. I like this glitter, so I'm putting it elsewhere, too. <laughs> Not just in the middle. So now this is blending so much that I'm needing to kind of mimic that on this side so that it kind of makes sense. The pearl stayed very separated here, but here the gold blended in. The blue kind of came, came into the white and there's a lot of blending going on here. So I'm trying to get a similar look over here. Sometimes your art isn't what you expect. So you've got to make what you get work. 
that's what's happening here. I'm trying to get a look that I like. I'm gonna let the blue come out more. I let this sit for a good hour and the resin has really gotten to a semi wanting to set stage. When resin is spread out uh, and at a thin layer, it is workable for a long time, especially this particular resin. So I can still play with it. And what I'm trying to do now is I want all the lines to pretty much go in sort of a radiating kind of way. In this particular section. The one thing I wish hadn't happened quite so much, I, I think maybe I put too much gold. I lost more of the pearl than I was expecting. And like I would have wanted more pearl to show. But, you know, this is okay. This is pretty too. It's not what I had envisioned, but I like this. I think I this looks pretty cool. The blue kind of pointing out at some spots. Now the dimensional lines of paint are visible and I think that's kind of interesting. I Again, that's something else that I don't know that I would do again the same way. But it may end up being something I like when I go to add my Posca paint lines later. So I'm going to call it done for now. I love this area. Like I can't even stand how much I love this. The blue seeping into the glitter has actually grown on me quite a bit. I added a little bit of crushed glass to this little blue section here and here and then a little bit here. Now when I do a top coat it may be that you won't even notice that but we'll see. I'm not sure how that'll play. Um, but for now I'm going to put this to bed and can I can pick it up because it's not really the resin is not going to move anymore um, just from my tilting it so that you can kind of see how sparkly is this? Oh my gosh. It's just, <laughs> it is a sparkly fantasy. Oh, I am in glitter heaven. <laughs> Alrighty, we're going to end off here for part one. I'm going to put this sparkly beauty to bed. I'll pull off the tape in a couple of hours to allow the edge of the resin to smooth out and round off as it cures. Let me know in the comments what you think of this so far. What ideas are popping up for you? Tell me if you've made your first geode and how it's gone. What have you learned or might do differently? I'm excited to see how this ends up and I hope that you are too. I'll see you in part two. Go let your creative nature shine and maybe even sparkle. <laughs> Thank you for being with me. See you later. Bye now.